welcome back to my YouTube channel, or welcome back me, maybe, I don't know. It's been a good few months. Um, just quickly before we go into this video, this video, by the way, is going to be image edit number three. Okay, we're going to do edit this image through to black and white of Nicholas here. Um, just before we go into that, um, the videos for the 60D I am done with now. Um, I was going to do one or two more, but I've decided not to because I wanted to keep them on point. I was just, I said all along, I was just going to cover the menu. So uh, it's been four months since I've done the last one as well. Um, so I'm going to leave them there um, for those and do some different stuff going forward um, on this channel. There's less about camera specific stuff, tutorials, and more about some um, portrait photography, uh, lighting and things like that. I still need to figure some things out. Um, I'm currently on a break from social media. I've got the idea from um, Zach Arias. It's a damn good thing to do just to delete all the apps and change the passwords and get away from it all because it's a time suck. Um, you know, and you, there's a lot of crap out there on social media that just eats up a lot of time, so it's quite a distraction. Um, so, to kickstart this channel back up, um, along with some other work I'm getting on with, um, we're going to do a quick image edit video. Um, I have some other videos coming up as well, uh, but I wanted to open up with one of these because it's quite easy to, to put together. Um, I'm currently in Lightroom 5. I've just updated to Lightroom 5 and um, with Adobe Cloud and Photoshop CC so I'm still getting used to Lightroom 5 and how it works um, we'll see what we, see how we can do with this see there we are Lightroom version 5.3 okay I've finally managed to update my computer well I had to because my other one failed so with a bit of luck this screen capture will capture okay uh, sharp enough and um, what make my voice sound like I'm a voice actor over for a victim on a police documentary or something like that where it really slows down so um black and white okay now this image here was shot on the 5d mark ii and with the 50 millimeter f 1.8 mark ii lens plastic fantastic it's a great little lens um apart from having a crappy focus motor in it um so sometimes it'll trip you up i mean this isn't tack sharp but it's sharp enough to work with and it doesn't like shooting into light sources. You can see this image is a little bit flat in some areas because it's got light coming off the lit background. Now, just to go over how this was lit first before we go to the black and white conversion, um, the background is lit by two lights, one either side. And if we look here, um, it's just the center part and the edges which are lit with it slightly falling off towards the bottom uh, around the top of the frame and that's fine because that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to all to be uniform white Okay, and I can tell that it's shot with studio strobes on the background because if we look here ISO 125 50 mil f8 and 125th of a second for the shutter speed The 5d2 will sync at 200 1 200th of a second on occasions and most of the time 160th but for the studio strobes in the studio that I use, um, they are 125th of a second um, for the particular lights. They're Boeing's um, 500 watt seconds. I can't remember the actual model of them um, because they're not mine. Um, and they're a little bit slow on flash duration. So you need to shoot at 125th. Otherwise, you're going to see the second curtain. Okay. And now the key light on this one was actually with a speed light. So the main light, which is lighting Nicholas here, is a speed light boomed overhead. Um, on a simple uh, boom with a light stand, a monopod and a super clamp and it's with a one quarter grid on and I can't remember the power of the speed light I showed it months ago uh, that said it doesn't really matter because you, we don't know the distance of the lighting setup here anyway um, I would figure F8 we're probably looking around one eighth power to one quarter power thereabouts because it was a pretty close placement of the light now, we can tell it's a hard light source that's lit in because look at the hard shadow line here. We can see the position of the light because of the catch light in the eye. Okay, now you've got to be careful when using grids and placing them high up. Um, you want to make sure you get light in the eye so these don't go dark, unless you want that to happen, of course. Okay, and I'm looking for a symmetrical, okay, shadow here. Okay, and I mean, this won't be dead symmetrical, but more so here and under here and good light in the eyes and we can see there's some light coming off the background kicking onto the jawline here uh, which again that's fine and we've got good enough separation 
from the white shirt to the white background. So, oops, I zoomed in real close. So we've got here an essentially fairly monochrome image in terms of the colour palette. Okay, the skin tones aren't monochrome, granted, but white shirt, grey tie, grey pants, black belt. Okay, so it will work well um, for black and white. Now, before I go to black and white, what I'm going to do is just going to bring the exposure down just a touch there. It's just a little bit hot looking at the highlights um, on the head. And um, plus, because I know what I'm going to do with the contrast curves and clarity, um, I use, I'll back it off a little bit um, in, for that, really. I mean, it's only a tenth or two, not even a third of a stop. So, we'll go here. Black and white. And we're done. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so black and white conversion. I mean, it's subjective. You can just drag the saturation slider down, click on the black and white channel, um, or conversion, and work there. Now, I typically work on a point curve or tone curve of medium contrast. I find that going to Lightroom 4 and 5 from Lightroom version 3, the strong contrast one, is just a little bit too much. Um, it's just too strong. So I typically go off a medium base first. So I'll change that first. Now, what I will do, I am going to change the white balance. And you may wonder why with black and white, but it does actually have an effect, as we can see here. Okay, so I'm going to get it to a point where there's a little bit of a snap to it. And it's just a question of eyeballing um, to see what works. Uh, sometimes with portrait work, generally, the skin tone being one of the more important aspects is I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, and just work with it until I feel it fits. And uh, don't worry, we're not done yet. Obviously, if you're looking at a color image and color's critical for skin tone plus the clothing, you know, then you're going to concentrate on the clothing a fair bit as well. So, oh, stream close up. There we go. Right. Now, contrast. I'm just going to. Ooh, far too much. Pump the contrast up a little bit. Okay, just so we get some snap into it. And I'm looking at the black channel here and the highlight channel. Okay, we've still got a little, a little room to go there. That's fine. So we'll go to blacks. And I don't want to drag this down too far because now we're starting to clip and lose detail down here and including in one of the eyes. So we'll open that up a little bit. And we'll probably take it to about minus 12. And we'll probably drag the shadows down just a fraction there. Now, I'm expecting the light fall off to be darker down here. Remember, we're lit up here with the grid. It's quite close. So the light, light will fall off as it travels down, uh, down the body and down towards the bottom of the frame. Okay, so it's expected. So we've got a hotter zone up here and around the center area of the frame here and darker in this bottom section, um, which is fine. If the background wasn't lit on this one, we'd see a far, far, far more dramatic drop off um, because this has been opened up a little bit by the fact that these background lights are kicking back into the background, lighting the white paper, and then rattling around the studio. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the tone curve. Now, I'm gonna drag the highlight slider back just a little bit. I don't want to go too far because it gets really muddy. It kind of looks like a negative. There you go. And or some kind of polarized effect. So we'll back that off a little bit. The lights. Probably leave them where they are. Darks. I'm probably not going to want to raise them. In fact, I might just drag them down just a little bit. There. Just watching for the clipping. Um, I can probably get away with taking a, few, a couple more points on the black away. And we can see here, we're starting to clip on the belt. Not really that important, to be honest with you. I'd be more worried if we couldn't see any detail here. Um, and it was just a black section, solid black section of hair. Um, you know, it's uh, not really a worry. So let's have a look. And we'll go to the black and white channel. Now, if we drag the red slider, oh dear. It doesn't look great, does he? Okay, so we don't want to be taking that too far down. In fact, I usually tend to go plus a few points on that. And biggest change here, um, given 
Nicholas's skin tone is moving the orange slider. So again, we don't want to give him a real bad tan or sunburn. Okay, we'll probably just take that up just a little bit. The yellow will make a little bit of a difference, but you're going to see that more with people with lighter colored hair um, and, a, you know, say yellow clothing or yellow tones in the clothes, blonde hair, most certainly. Um, I'm not going to bother touching these because there's no blue green really uh, within this, so I'm not going to bother touching those. So, uh, the next thing I wanted to do is I'm just going to have a look at the whites and highlights up here. Uh, no, I don't want to drag that down. And that's too much. There we go, and I can probably just pop in a little bit more contrast. It's quite a contrasty image as it is. Um, let's have a quick look at that. It's worth sometimes just to get rid of all this um, crap around the screen, and um, just to have a look at the full preview and see where we are. I'm quite happy with that. Now, the last stage generally, um, and as it should be, is to sharpen. Um, now, I'm still kind of tweaking my sharpening presets in Lightroom 5 because it tends to be a little bit more aggressive than Lightroom 4, certainly on the clarity and um, you know on the sharpening. Um, so I'm still trying to tweak that at the moment. I'm using the latest process there uh, and using Adobe Standard. Uh, I'm not running any custom camera profiles. I've got no way of building those at the moment. So. Um, I'm just going to come down to a preset here, Canon 5D2, Clarity plus 10, Sharp plus 48, Radius 1.2, and Detail 46. And we'll just click on that, and it just tightens up and adds a little bit more contrast and sharpen things up nicely. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that there. I'm just looking at the skin tone. Again, I will probably just nip back down to the orange channel here and just lift that just a little bit. There we go. And that is pretty much it. Okay, uh, fairly straightforward. Um, you could, of course, set a preset up. Um, to speed this process up. The difficulty is when you're doing with black and white stuff is every single image is going to be different, different skin tones, different color palettes with the the background, the clothing, um, you know, the hair, the color of the eyes and the tone of the lips and all, you know, all kinds of things kind of going on. So I'll typically click on black and white and work, work my way through from white balance, going through the settings here and down to the channel and then sharpen out and then I'll come back and maybe do some fine tweaks. Um, I'll probably end up being a bit quicker in Lightroom 5 once I've uh, had it for a little bit longer and got used to it. Like I say, the sliders tend to be um, quite aggressive with short movements. They seem to have more steps and more uh, room for adjustment, um, but I'm using them like I was using Lightroom 4. Um, you had to kind of add quite a bit of clarity to see a difference on that one, whereas Lightroom 5, not so much. So there we go, image edit number three. Um, of Nicholas converting to black and white, key light with a grid um, in power mount butterfly position with two lights on a white background. Uh, fairly straightforward. Um, I will have a, another video um, coming shortly. I'll be adding more moving forward, although I've got some a lot of processing work to catch up on. Um, so uh, it'll be uh, few and far between probably initially. Um, but going forward, I want to start bringing some more content to the channel other than the usual camera tutorials, which I now, I'm now done with um, because I don't have any other cameras to do tutorials for apart from the 5D2, which is no longer made, so that's pointless. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will catch you guys in the next video.